So let's let's talk about this piece. Okay. It's called nesting. Nesting. Okay. Yes. So I think as an artist, you you create, or even as a person, anyone who wants to create things, you usually create from the brain because mm -hmm. you're really interested in it, or you create from the heart because you love something or you love someone and you want to give them mm -hmm. a gift or make an action towards that thing that you love, or, you know, it's a mixture of all those things. Yeah, because you get the eggs in there, right? Right, right. So you is see that, things is recycling. That, is that a connection to this? Like, yeah, that's a connection to a sculpture, but it's a connection to your life and how you feel things, right? Right. Yeah. So, so, you, so this, it's just your, some of your personality is just carried over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My aesthetics, my personality. Mm -hmm. But also... This piece in particular, I was riffing off of a pretty famous sculpture called the Crouching Venus. Crouching Venus? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for anyone who loves art history, you, you see Venus, you see a lot of goddesses, mythology. Mm -hmm. Usually, if you look at art history, you'll see mythology first, then religious paintings, and then people start going into more inner, you know, how they're feeling, inner psychology. Mm -hmm. But early paintings, Renaissance paintings, um, and beyond, they use a lot of these mythological stories. So mm -hmm. the Venus, um, Venus what? and Aphrodite are both goddesses. Mm -hmm. Venus is like, they're both counterparts, right? So Aphrodite and Venus, they're both, they both represent love and beauty. Mm -hmm. But Aphrodite is more of like eternal, everlasting youth and desire. Whereas Venus is more of the decent, modest, wifey goddess. Okay. So I, I love this sculpture. You know, if you look at sculptures of Aphrodite, she's fearless and showing everything. But the Venus, she this one, the sculpture is called Crouching Venus. And she she's surprised while bathing hmm. and she's so surprised. She's trying to like crisscross her arms and cover herself up. Maybe cause she saw a reflection. No. Cause she didn't want people to see her nude. Oh, okay. Cause well, she yeah, no, that part too, but, <laughs> but maybe because there's no other people there. So maybe she, she saw herself. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here to bring the dumb side <laughs> of this. No, but it's like, no. Oh my gosh, look at these parts I have. <laughs> so the, the, the hair, Yes. Does, so is that symbolize their connection? Yeah. Yeah. They're the same. They're the same person. They're both the crouching Venus. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. They're just tilted at different angles, but but I wanted it to be mm -hmm. their connection. Yes. So people might be interested also in the material. Like, what's the style of painting? What kind of paint did you use? And let's talk about the size so they can get a, a better an idea. Because maybe through video, they can't really tell. I mean, it looks like a big picture, a big painting. But So yeah, what's the size and materials that you used for it? So it's a wood panel. I made the panel, and it's an oil painting. The size is four feet wide, about 32 inches tall. And because of my sculpture background, I've, I, I've always been really interested in the two stories you tell when you're building a piece, right? The, mm -hmm. the story you tell with the subjects, but also the one you tell with how you build the piece. Mm -hmm. So this one and a few other pieces I was playing with, leaving parts of the wood substrate raw underneath. Oh, okay. So the figures, the eggs, they, they're they all showing the wood grain coming through. Awesome. Okay, yeah. And everything else is painted. Very cool. Now that you point that out, I can see opacity. it. So the paint I'm using for those are is all translucent. Mm. You're like translucent earth tones and translucent whites, whereas everything else is more opaque. That's so cool. You know, I mean, the, the art is as deep as the canvas it's on. Like the canvas <sighs> is a part of it too. Or the, I know it's not a canvas, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my layman terms of art, the, 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 
the physical that the paint lays on top of is now a part of it. It's not just covered up. That's really neat. But it mm-hmm. looks great because you still add some shading, right? You still, it looks like you did, no, right? It's to make, I hope they to make look, everything work. I hope they look sculptural. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. see the grain of the wood. It's really cool. So I, I never took a painting class in school. All of my skills is from private lessons when I was younger okay. and workshops. Mm-hmm. So I paint kind of like I sculpt in a way. Okay. Or I've thought about painting like sculpting. Okay. That's cool. But the hair, I hair is another subject that I've used a lot. I think it's, it too is really interesting because it's, it's internal and external. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it, uh, science fact, it holds your DNA, right? I think most people know that. What does? Hair does. Oh yeah. yeah. It holds your DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, it also is the way that we express our identities. You know, we cut it, we dye it, we try to shape it to show who we are, who we want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it keeps growing after you die. Did you know that? I didn't, that and teeth, right? The teeth don't rot. The teeth I just I think so. Stay. So if you yeah. find a mummy, they'll still have long hair and, and teeth. teeth. Yes, yeah. it's crazy. 